Just to start off, Infinity War was a great movie, Endgame was okay, but they caused a huge problem for the entire franchise that nobody likes to talk about. I'm gonna talk about Infinity War. This movie exists on a spectrum with every element ranging from really bad to really, really good. The movie starts off and it just throws you right into the plot, which I kind of respect, but at the same time, it's a bit weird how episodic this has all become because even if you've seen the previous two Avengers, you're gonna have no clue what's going on. We got Hulk in space, Thor and Loki are good now, and Thanos is there to f*** them up. You spend a lot of time with Thor, but I don't really think they managed Thor as a character to the best of their abilities. But still got a mom, though? Killed by a dark elf. The best friend? Stubbed through the heart. He does have one of the larger side plots going on, and it can be wrapped up with him needing to get a weapon and him trying to get that weapon until he gets the weapon. And even though he eventually succeeds in getting this weapon, it doesn't play a role into anything. Him getting that weapon was completely inconsequential. For us watching, it looks as if it's just a toy for him. It's just something. Now, this movie is competent enough to know what to cut down on. In the trailer, there's a scene between Spider-Man and Doctor Strange, and in the movie, it's a lot different. See if you can spot the difference between the two. I'll play the trailer version first. I'm Peter, by the way. Doctor Strange. Oh, I'm using your made-up names. Then I am Spider-Man. I'm Peter, by the way. Doctor Strange. Oh, you're using your made-up names. Um, I'm Spider-Man, then. In the trailer, Doctor Strange is very cordial with Spider-Man. He's happy to meet him and showing him respect. In the movie, he's very standoffish. Him and Tony clash heads a lot. There's a conflict between the groups of them. And Doctor Strange has positioned himself morally to protect the stone over protecting them. And this adds for a more interesting character dynamic. I just wanted to point this out because the movie definitely knows what it's doing with these characters. So it confuses the shit out of me when they make poor choices. I think that they did a wonderful job delivering on what they promised us. But there's a few things that I think detract from it so much that if it wasn't in the film, it would have been perfect. So why, why can't you make it perfect? Just make it perfect. Like how they mismanage emotional moments. Now, this has always been a problem with these Marvel movies, but they don't know when to just let a moment exist. They always feel the need to detract from whatever direction they're trying to lead their audience in, when sometimes it, it pulls you out of it. Like this moment right here where Gamora's forced to kill her own father, Thanos. Now, it's a bait-and-switch moment. Thanos doesn't really die, but the audience wants to feel what she's feeling. She puts on a really good performance just for this guy to ruin it. Now, sometimes it pulls you out, other times it doesn't, but overall, it feels like they're not trying to commit to the emotion that they're looking to get from the scene. And it just reminds you that you're watching a movie instead of being invested in the experience. There's some really emotional moments that they do let be emotional, such as when Thanos had to throw Gamora off the cliff to sacrifice her and get the soul stone. That, that was really good. I'm sorry. Now, can you imagine if this guy that's watching it just looked at Thanos and was like, Oof, and I thought I had a bad father. That's exactly how some of these other scenes feel, and I was half expecting something like that to come. And can we talk about how funny it would have been if he didn't bring his daughter with him? It's just a complete convenience that he brought the thing that he loves with him. If he didn't bring her, he would have been like, All right, well, I gotta be right back. And who is this guy? He's just taking his word for it. He doesn't ask any questions. He doesn't ask him how he knows that to be true. Just met this guy like 30 seconds ago, but let's take his word on it and just kill my daughter because I believe you. And are you 100% sure that it has to be somebody that you love to that extent? Maybe you care for somebody else a little bit less and you can try it out on them. All right, fuck it. I'm the person that ruined it this time. They do this several times. There's another time where Thor's actually trying to get some character development and then they got to break that tension too. A rage and uh, vengeance, anger, lost regret, they're all tremendous motivators. Well, if I'm wrong, and what more could I lose? I could lose a lot. Me personally, I could lose a lot. 
Like, is it in character for Rocket Raccoon to say that? Yeah, probably. And was it funny? Yeah. But that's what happens when you mix all these varying titles into one movie. It makes something that's totally confusing when you don't play it appropriately. One thing I find insufferable about this movie is the use of Chris Pratt or Star-Lord. This character was super likable in the Guardians of the Galaxy movies, but then when they transferred him over here, he only exists to be annoying and inconvenience people. He's a net negative to the film where I would argue he's the main antagonist. There's a scene where the Avengers are about to win, they're about to stop Thanos and remove the gauntlet from his hand, but then Chris Pratt comes in with his ego and starts hitting him in the face, ruining the whole thing. I call that bad writing. He is aware of the severity of the situation, he knows what's at stake, and he knows that if they don't get that thing off his hand, they are going to lose and half the galaxy will die, and this is just thrown in there to inconvenience things. It's the amount of stupidity that you just can't believe, it's not believable. And the funny thing is, right before this happened, there's a scene where Doctor Strange goes into a trance and basically looks at all the different possible variations for the future. How many did you see? 14 million, 605. How many did we win? Then of course it's just one. If there's over a million variations of how you could lose, wouldn't you think there's more than one variation to win? Like what if the exact same thing happened except Tony wore like different shoes? Wouldn't that be a different version of winning? It's later revealed that he didn't want to tell Tony what to do because it wouldn't have happened if he told him. But it really makes you think if he was able to see exactly what needed to happen, then why couldn't he just tell Chris Pratt not to hit Thanos in the face when he shows up? I feel like that would have just won the situation right there. That was the only reason they didn't get him. Or a variation of other things. Tell Thor to aim for the head when he hits him with the axe. Oh yeah, so that's another thing. For whatever reason, when they actually get Thanos in a vulnerable position, it happens like two, three times, where if you just kept hitting him or kept doing the thing that you're doing, you would kill him. But for whatever reason, the character has to sit there and monologue at him. Oh, okay, you're finally using that axe. All right, let's see it. Got him in the chest. All right, all right, you almost got him. I told you, <laughs> you'd die for that. You're you pushing it more in his chest? That's like giving him a purple nurple. He's got all the infinity stones, you jackass. I've seen you be less gentle with collateral damage to random unsuspecting civilians. This guy just killed your entire family, just cut his head off, giving him time to monologue and shit. Yeah, that's what you fucking get. Yeah, yeah. And then this one. Okay, he locked his foot up. Oh, you did some damage. Come on. Now you gotta hit him again. All that. Don't let him monologue. Hit him again. You deserve this shit. With this whole axe in the chest thing, I never got this either. I thought he had to be worthy to pick it up. Are the rules now that you can lift it so long as it's piercing your chest? Or is Thanos worthy? In which case, that means his whole cause is justified. Look at his face, dude. What the fuck? Another thing with the convenience of the writing. So Thanos is a murderous person. He's a villain through and through. He goes to planets and wipes them out. He doesn't have mercy for any life, pretty much. But when it comes to the event, Avengers or the Guardians of the Galaxy, he'll just temporarily immobilize them. He doesn't think to kill them or anything when he can do it easily. He only kills people that aren't important or people that we don't know. So it just begs the question as to why doesn't he just kill the people that are standing in his way of completing his mission? This is something that's supposed to be more important than his own daughter's life. It's just the inconsistency of what these characters can do. Same with Doctor Strange. You set him up to have all of these abilities but for whatever reason in the situations that those abilities are needed he no longer can do it and sometimes they don't even bother to explain why like why don't you just portal him into the sun you're doing all of these cool cgi tricks but nothing that would be effective towards him it just feels like this movie has trouble creating and maintaining the stakes of a given situation and the end of this movie made me think that they had some balls i considered it to be one of the most iconic endings to any movie ever Ever. But we soon find out that it was only a promotional tool for Endgame. And as a result, Endgame ended up roasting even more than this movie did and doing fantastic in the box office. We wanted to see how they were going to get out of this one. And that was going to take some clever writing, you would think. But no, not really. They just can time travel now and reset it all. Somebody peed my pants. I don't know if it was baby me or old me or just me me.
Time travel! I know we're playing with million dollar franchises here, but please, for the love of God, when you kill a character, keep him dead. Time travel! I want it to be impactful, I really do, but sometimes when I'm looking at Iron Man dying, I'm like, uh, is he really dead? Turns out after this, they actually stuck to that decision, or did they? Because even in this situation, the one time they stick to an important character death, he's coming back in another form! <laughs> Using time travel in a story that has never included time travel is just a lazy device when you write yourself in a corner and you don't know how you're going to backtrack. They still had a ton of money to squeeze out of all these franchises. Guardians of the Galaxy wasn't going anywhere. Because at the end of this movie, I thought, finally, Marvel grew a pair. We're gonna kill all the characters? That's fucking awesome. I know you guys love these characters, and I do too, but you know what I mean? Time travel? Really? Time travel! I hope that they take the right things out of the success of Infinity War. The general audience really wants a well-developed villain. And speaking of Thanos, the VFX that they used is very impressive. I think it'll stand the test of time. His physicality is felt in every scene. When he's face-to-face -face with a smaller character, you really feel his presence. His story is well-developed. He's understandable. He's well-liked. I like it a lot like the, the fact that they went the direction of this is a Thanos movie and these characters are in Thanos's world and I like that choice and I think that's why I give a pass for mostly every flaw that this movie has is because I was really engaged they didn't spend too much time on the B and C plot they got right back to Thanos usually whenever I wanted it to so the flow was still there but overall I'll have to give it a 7 out of 10 a 7 out of 10 if you're not happy with that I don't know what to tell you. I'm just a guy on the internet after all. Keep that in mind, guys. If there's something you want me to review next, let me know and I'll see you guys next time. Appreciate it.